Is the water supposed to be this cold? Ah, my hand slipped again. Hey, what's that noise? What are you doing? Sorry, I'm sorry, okay? Another fine mess I've gotten myself into. What happened, Claude? You're soaked. The student whose turn it was to do the dishes today was ill, so I volunteered to take his place. The dining hall lady was on my case the whole time for breaking plates and getting water everywhere. Actually, not everywhere, mostly on myself. It was just one big mess. It wore me right out, too. I could really use a nap about now. <laughs> you might be a noble with a fancy bloodline, but you sure don't act the part. Being noble or common doesn't have anything to do with washing dishes. Oh, I dare say most nobles would refuse to do it. But hey, I prefer it your way. You don't act like you're better than everyone. <laughs> I'm honored that you acknowledge my greatness. And I'm rather fond of your blunt way of praising a person's strengths, too. Really? To be honest, I don't actually trust my own ability to read people. I like to look for the good in them, but that doesn't always mean it's really there. I mean, you seem like a good person, but your heart could be black for all I know. You say you can't figure people out, but what you said just now was pretty shrewd. It's wise not to trust appearances alone. I'll keep that in mind. Though, I'm not sure I should be taking advice from someone covered in dish suds. <laughs> oh. yeah, I see your point. A little closer... Hey, Leone. What are you up to? Oh, come on! What'd you do that for? Look, you ran my quarry off. You were hunting? Oh, is the dining hall that short on food supplies? No, but I like to hunt every now and again. Keep my skills sharp. I suppose so. You're from a family of hunters, right? Well, there's no shortage of prey to hunt around here. True. Not many hunters around the monastery, huh? Rivers full of fish, trees bursting with fruit, mushrooms ready to harvest all over. It's the kind of place where you can really be self-sufficient. Guess we can thank the goddess for that. Uh, I don't know. I'm more inclined to thank the bountiful earth than the goddess for such things. The goddess may offer spiritual guidance, but she doesn't fill our bellies, that's for sure. Not a very noble-sounding thing, to disregard the goddess and honor the land. Leone, whose grace do you suppose humans live by? The goddess? The nobility? I'd say it's neither. It's the endless bounty of this magnificent land that gives us life. Won't hear me deny it. But who's to say it isn't the goddess whose protection makes nature thrive? I'm not the most devout person, but I'm not about to go around saying we don't need the goddess at all. I said she gives spiritual support, didn't I? I wouldn't go so far as to say she's wholly unnecessary. But in Elmira, Dagda, Bridget, and plenty of other places, they don't believe in the goddess. Nature is a blessing that knows nothing of borders. The goddess is the goddess, and the earth is the earth. They should both be revered for what they are. Hmm. Look, this is just my personal opinion. If you truly believe that everything depends on the goddess of Saros, that's your... Hey, it's fine. You don't have to worry about me. I'm a believer, but I know there are those who aren't. And I kind of like your way of thinking. Giving thanks to nature and all, it makes sense. I knew a wild girl like you would be able to get behind an idea like that. What, like I'm feral or something? Hey, you know, this kind of talk could be viewed as heresy if it was public. Yeah, probably. We'll just have to keep it to ourselves. Well, we've got another battle coming up. What do you think of our chances? Winning is always the goal. At any rate, I've done everything I can to prepare. That's the right attitude. I'm sure they're doing all they can on their side, too. I don't doubt it, but however strong they are, it's no more than a Fodlan concern. Who knows how far this world extends beyond the boundaries of Fodlan? Talk of strength or weakness doesn't amount to much when it's only in relation to a tiny corner of the world. Guess you're right. Thinking about it like that, even this war seems like a storm in a teacup. Exactly. It's nothing more than an internal quarrel amongst the people of Fodlan. <laughs> Typical laid-back Claude. I always like talking to you. Your perspective on the world is so refreshing. Things I thought were obvious turn out not to be. The way you think, that changes the way you see things. Common sense never tells the whole story. 
It's similar to what we were talking about before, about how you need to doubt yourself first. True enough, but where did you get these ideas? That perspective of looking past the walls of Fodlan, when it's all we can see in front of us. Do you really want to know? I do. Uh, but I'm afraid now isn't the time. When this war is won, I'll tell you all about it. It'll be easier for me to show you than to tell you. Show me? Are we going somewhere? It's quite a distance. You'll start to appreciate how big the world is if you go. <laughs> Sounds eye-opening. I'll look forward to it. Can we call it a promise? Yes, it's a promise. But first, let's win this war and leave it far behind us. <laughs>